Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So today I am going to talk about urine ARI, that is urine routine examination. There are a lot of things I would like to discuss over here, and we can diagnose a lot of diseases just by looking to the urine ARI. So the first thing I would like to mention over here is proteinuria, that is the protein in urine. So what is the normal range of protein in urine that is less than 30 mg per deciliter per 24 hours. This is the normal protein in the urine. What is microalbuminuria? That means we are having a lesser amount of proteins. Micro means small. That is 30 to 300 mg per deciliter per 24 hour. 30 to 300. And it is a precursor. This thing is a precursor toward renal failure in case of diabetic nephro nephropathy. Diabetic nephropathy. Coming toward that. What is macroalbuminuria? When the protein in the urine is more than 300 mg per deciliter per 24 hours. Now this is very important because a lot of patients we see in our ward and in our ER they end up with renal failure and just by adding a simple medication for hypertension in case of diabetic patient you can prevent the kidney diseases the urine depth stick that we use for urine RE that can pick the minimum amount of protein that is 500 milligram per deciliter so it means the urine depth stick cannot detect less than 500 milligram per deciliter and the microalbuminuria is 30 to 300 that is a lesser amount so urine depth stick report may be normal urine depth, depth stick report is normal in case of microalbuminuria and the patient is having microscopic damage going on plus one urine mean in urinary if there is plus one proteinuria it means 500 milligram plus two mean thousand plus three mean 1500 so you add on like this but the main problem is it cannot detect the microalbuminuria for microalbuminuria you have to send urine for microalbumin or most accurate most reliable is urine protein to crate ratio and that is equivalent to 24 hour urinary protein this is more reliable and this is more accurate and the studies have shown that there are a lot of other causes of proteinuria if you collect urine for 20, 24 hours even prolonged standing can cause significant proteinuria heavy exertion can, can cause proteinuria so to avoid all those things <coughs> we can check <coughs> spot urine protein to crate ratio and let's suppose if this is equal to 3 what does that mean if urinary protein to crate ratio is 3 it means 3 gram per 24 hour <coughs> 3 gram per 24 hour if it is equal to 0.1 what does it mean it mean 1.1 gram per 24 hour or 100 milligram per 24 hour so it can detect even the microalbuminuria as well as the macroalbuminuria so it is more reliable well every diabetic patient if comes to you you must look for urine for microalbumin or urine protein to crate ratio because if you diagnose microalbuminuria in this phase if you di diagnose diabetic nephropathy in cases of microalbuminuria you can prevent further progression how you just add add on ac inhibitor or arbs and that has a significant effect in the uh, renal protection if it is started earlier and urinary protein to crate ratio must be checked so the 24 hour urinary protein is obsolete this thing has replaced that thing and even it can detect the microalbuminuria and it should be done early in the morning early in the morning because standing and exertion increases urinary protein and it should be repeated after six months 
after six months so if a patient is having protein in urine and other things are normal you should think about damage at the glomerular level or damage at the tubular level so this was regarding proteinuria infection can also cause significant proteinuria but in infections you will also find the wbc the rbc or the nitrite so keeping in mind the protein can come from uh, the kidneys or it can come from the uh, down the bladder uh, ureter if there is infection so coming toward the rbc versus rbc cost in urine re if you see rbc what does that mean and if you see rbc cost what does that mean if you see only rbc it means that the the cause of rbc is down from the kidneys it is not from the kidneys it is down from the kidneys from the pyramids to to the pelvis to the ureter to the bladder or the urethra what is meant by rbc cast rbc cast mean that the rbc is coming from the glomerulus the rbc is coming from kidneys from the glomerulus because there is a, a, a smaller uh, space for the rbc and the rbc has to squeeze has to squeeze through small space so it adopt a, a, a specific uh, molding of that space in which it is passed that is called the cost because there are proteins inside the tubular system that is called tem horse hull protein tem temps protein so what does the protein do they actually pack these rbc that is actually cost so the rbc cost mean that the rbc the source of rbc is the glomerulus and the rbc has been squeezed through this tubular space to come into the urine so the cause is in the glomerulus and you can see it in the glomerulonephritis so whenever you see rbc cost think of something going on in the glomerulus and think of the causes of the glomerulus if you see only rbc think of something down the ure the ureter the bladder or the urethra such as the stone stone will give you rbc not rbc cast infection uti will give you rbc not rbc cast tumor can give you rbc how much rbc in the urine is normal that is less than 5 rbc per high power field according to the usmd and according to the mtb master the board less than 5 rbc per high power field is normal rbc in the urinary so that was the difference between the rbc cost causes the glomerulus the glomerulus versus rbc only rbc causes down the tract now coming toward the wbc or pus cell what is pus cell this is the wbc wbc so two to five pus cells are normal if more than that then this is abnormal stone can give you wbc infections can give you uti interstitial nephritis can give you of course it is related to some drugs that is the ppis so the interstitial nephritis that can also give you wbc it was supposed to give you eosinophils eosinophils but in urine re you cannot differentiate between neutrophil eosinophils or basophils there are special stains used for them but we are talking about only urine re so in urine re you will see increased wbc nitrite there is a famous saying bacteria ate nitrate and produce nitrite so it shows bacterial infection the nitrite shows bacterial infection the nitrite shows bacterial infection so till now we have studied the proteinuria and the cause of proteinuria rbc versus rbc cost wbc pus cell and nitrite what if we are having the calcium oxalate in urine if there are calcium oxalate in urine so it means that there is a possibility of stone formation in the kidney there is possibility of stone formation in the kidney so if this person is hypertensive if the urinary report you are studying belongs to the patient who is hypertensive you must add thiazide diuretics thiazide diuretics because thiazide diuretics it absorbs the calcium if it is absorbed in the calcium into the into the blood 
So the calcium will less calcium will come out or no calcium will come out. So there will be decreased formation of stone. So there will be decreased formation of stone. If this patient is having problem of stone, you look at the pH. It is is it acidic pH or alkaline pH that causes the stone? So that is acidic pH. Acidic pH. Alkaline pH dissolve the calcium. So you add it. so there are three other things. Hyaline cast that is seen in dehydration or normal. Dehydration are normal phenomena because there are only protein, temp horse fall protein. Another is granular cost. Granular cost we see in ATN acute tubular necrosis. The envelope shaped crystal that we see that we see in ethylene glycol, ethylene glycol poisoning. Ethylene glycol poisoning.